Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Connect Cape Fear podcast, a show where locals, travelers, and newcomers from all over come to find community and connection in this great place we call home. On the pink couch today is Todd Natali, owner of Nautical Bowls, and he is going to teach us the right way to say this word. So if you've been struggling to say this word when you're going to go order at Nautical Bowls, don't worry, we're going to clean that up for you today. Todd, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Pleasure. We are doing the handshake. I we got to write that Anyway, yes. Tell yes. us about tell us about yourself, Todd. Uh, you're new to Wilmington. Came from the Northeast. You were in construction. We were talking off camera. Give us a little bit of a rundown of how you got to Wilmington and why you chose this to be home. Well, so yeah, um, my wife and I we uh, were from New York, the Hudson Valley area, which is about an hour and a half north of New York City. And uh, a couple of years ago, you know, slightly after the you know the pandemic was kind of winding down a little bit. We, a couple of things changed in our life, just like most people, or I should say many people, things changed in their lives. And we decided that it was, you know, time to leave New York. And frankly, we were just searching for the next, uh, what we thought would be a good place to live. And I always kind of preferred moving south a little bit. And honestly, my wife suggested North Carolina, which I didn't really understand. It was just sort of a out of the air. It seemed like sort of a decision to make that we uh, that we had done. So we searched around, you know, tried to figure out what were the best preferred cities to move to in North Carolina. And Wilmington always showed up within the top five. Okay. And so we thought to ourselves, if we're going to leave New York, which New York is a beautiful area that we lived in in the Hudson Valley, uh, we said to ourselves, let's be coastal. And so that's why we chose Wilmington. So Hudson Valley, do you, do you, are, like, is that Jets, Giants, or Bills? Like what? So mostly Jets Giants. Okay. Now uh, I'm I'm what they call an Ets fan. So, okay. So any sport that ends in Ets, I'm a fan of them. So Mets and Jets. Mets Jets Nets. Nets. Ah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that. Yeah. I, I worked in sports media. I'm almost 40 years old, and I never put that together, that there's yes. three Ets. Well, then what hockey team do you pull for? I don't do hockey. You don't do yeah. hockey? Yeah, it messes Hockey's up. not my sport. It messes up the Ets thing right. anyways. Too. Right. I mean, it's a good sport. It's a fun sport. It's just not where I go. Yeah. 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 So what what was it that attracted y'all to come to Wilmington? I, listen, I'm going to be honest. There, there wasn't anything that we knew about Wilmington at all when we decided to move here. It was just the fact that it was coastal. Uh, we didn't know if it was a good, better, and different sort of an area to live. We mm. just figured we'd give it a shot. It was truly one of those throw a dart at the map and let's make it happen. So now that you're here for a little while, yep. what do you like about the place? Quite a bit, honestly. Um, coastal living is is a lot of fun. Um, you know, We get to experience the intercoastal. We're at the beach whenever we can help it. Um, Wilmington City, I can see, is, is a Really, it's a wonderful city. I can see that it's growing. They're they're doing a lot to improve this city, and uh, it seems like a really exciting place. And the growth in this area is just beyond what I could ever have seen up where I was. Yeah, really. New York. Yeah. I mean, New York. You feel like it's always hustle and bustle, and there's always things under construction. Compared to here, most people would be like, "No way, we're not developing anywhere nearly that quick." But you see it differently. Well, so where we were, um, which is it was the uh, Dutchess County, Ulster County area, which is literally just, you know, up the Hudson River from uh, Manhattan, but it's rural. It was very rural, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so corn farms and cow farms and, and so on outside of a, you know, a small city was not uncommon. Um, we did have a lot of what you call uh, New York weekenders that have second homes in that particular area. And it's a destination for, uh, you know, Manhattan uh, living um, for weekenders, you know. So it's nice in that regard, but it just did not have a lot of growth and development happening there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you were in commercial real estate, or commercial development. Commercial construction. Commercial construction, yep. okay. And then uh, now you own Nautical Bowls. Nautical Bowls. You wanted to get into some food casual service walk us through that journey what was that like going from construction to to food service so when uh, when i left new york my background was commercial construction i've been in the uh, industry and the trades i should say for essentially my whole life my father raised me in the in the trades and i had a commercial plumbing contracting business which we did an awful lot of a lot of what you see around here a lot of apartment buildings hospitals um, hotels, you know, things like that. And so it was something that I knew. It was something I was comfortable with. I was very familiar with. So I thought, you know, let me, let me just kind of continue that, see how it works out for a couple of years. You know, even though 
the whole idea of having a change of life was was uh, very prevalent in my mind anyway. And so I did get involved in a, in a company that was local down here doing what I always have done in my life, which was commercial plumbing. And I quickly, within five, six months, realized that is just not what I wanted to mm. do anymore. Um, you know, commercial construction is, is a difficult business. Was it different doing it down here versus where where you were? Not really. Okay. Uh, honestly, um, you know, commercial construction is commercial construction. Right. And uh, I mean, it's it's challenging. So when I decided to end all of that, it was it was probably the best decision that I had made because I just really needed to stop that. Yeah, yeah. So different seasons of life. Right. You probably didn't want to be working that hard anymore. You get some opportunity to enjoy the place that you're living in now. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. So tell us about Nautical Bulls. Um, it's a fast casual, and I'm I'm not I'm going to let you pronounce the word because I yeah. don't want to mess it up on air. So I'm going to follow you. So it's acai. Acai. Is the word that you're looking for. Acai. That's right. And that's a yeah. berry. It's a berry from it's a Brazil, berry. Yeah, yeah. native to Brazil. Superfood, right? Super high in antioxidants, right? What it's and it, that seems to be growing in popularity. Yes, um, is it just and and I think Wilmington, one of the great things about being here in Wrightsville Beach and all the surrounding areas, very very health conscious community here. Right. It, is that part of what led into your decision to open Nautical Bowls and and versus probably a host of other franchise opportunities you could have taken advantage of? Completely. So the restaurant industry for me was always a little intriguing. Um, I've done rest in the commercial construction that I've done. I've done you know, restaurants as well. And I've always found it a little bit interesting, a little intriguing. So when we thought about what would be the next thing, that was kind of the first thought that I had was let's do something that was food based in the food industry. And my wife is a vegetarian. So for her to find good, healthy alternatives uh, for what we think is fast, casual food, very difficult for mm -hmm. her. So when we discovered the acai concept of um, alternative food eating, which was something that we didn't experience where we were uh, up in New York, they just didn't have it, and discovered it down here, it was an instant hit for her. So that was one of the transitional things when, when I decided to leave the uh, construction management business, we stumbled across you know, nautical bowls when I was searching for what would be the next best thing for us. And so nautical bowls was right there in that concept, which, uh, you know, we did search other different kinds of franchising okay. and just decided to settle with Nautical Bulls. It was a good choice. Well, yeah. What was it about that franchise model that spoke to you? Um, well, so of course it was the alternative foods, right? Which uh, was key and important for mm -hmm. my wife. Um, and it was, frankly, it's affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, if you investigate uh, and research other um, franchises, or even if you were to try to do something on your own, not being a franchise, it can be expensive. Yeah. And so we found that this one was affordable, um, right in our budget, and we like the concept. Yeah. So that's why we went with it. And you have a great location, too. Right. Right at Pier 33, North Riverwalk area of downtown. Tell people exactly where they can find you, because... So Nautical Bowls is located in the Pier 33 building. It's Our address actually is 32 Harnett Street. Uh, Pier 33 is right along the riverfront. You'll see the uh, marina is right there. And the newest apartment development that it's just uh, finished is called the Metropolitan. So Metropolitan, Pier 33, right next to each other, right along with the marina. That amount, The amount of development that they've done there over the last four or five years is impressive. I was looking at an old picture of Wilmington from the, from the West Bank, uh, Brunswick County side of the river. Um, and, and there was nothing up there right. past the Murkison building. There was no development at all. And right. now there's apartments, there's an amphitheater, there's businesses. Right. What's it like being a part of that community and, and being able to see like that whole development take place and more people moving in? What, what's it like? Well, so when I started with my commercial realtor investigating, uh, you know, different locations, and they had brought Pier 33 to my attention, I quickly drove down there. Like I hung up the phone with my commercial realtor and drove down there to, to see if this was real. Because I was almost like, you're kidding me, is this legit, is yeah. this real? So I drove down there and for me it was a, an instant click. I was feeling like it was a no brainer. I really wanted to be part of it. The, um, uh, you know, the surrounding area, the, the fact that the cove is there mm -hmm. and the marina is there, 
Uh, and the amphitheater is right there. For me, it was something that I wanted to be part of. And I wanted to be part of downtown Wilmington as well, altogether, whether it's the northern part of the Riverwalk or the historic part of the Riverwalk. I just wanted to be part of Wilmington. Yeah, yeah. Um, you opened in March. That's right. Uh, yeah, March, right? It's June now. You've got some special events coming up. It's the summertime. What do the next two or three months look like for you, for people who might be listening and want to that are going to be over on that side of town, want to pop in and support you. got some fun yeah. stuff going on that we talked about off camera. What pre- preview for folks what the next couple months look like? Uh, so we do events outside of our store. And it, so it looks very much like um, when you see uh, the Azalea Festival and there's pop-up tents and so on. So we try to participate in as many uh, events. Uh, it helps, you know, with business, of course. And one of the events that we have taking place coming up is actually tomorrow at the Marina Grill. They have concerts that they do on Friday nights Mm -hmm. that they run through the summer. And they were very kind. And uh, the owners of Marina Grill and Tequila Both, which are the restaurants that are adjacent to us, um, have been helpful, very helpful to us. They recognize that that particular spot that we're in, we all need to come together and, and try to make business improve. And so they've invited us to participate in their concert nights. So tomorrow is going to be our first time. And uh, if we can manage it, uh, we'll do it every Friday until end of summer. Yeah. So you guys can be out there with like a cart or what's, you know, people got like a little food truck type of thing. What's what, what can people expect if they're going to so be out there? It, it is literally one of those pop up uh, tents. Nice. So what we have is, you know, the branded pop up tent. So you'll see it say nautical bowls. Uh, we have tables that we set up that have um, you know covers and aprons on them that all are branded. You'll see the you know our brand uh, everywhere, and um, we have freezers as well. So we bring freezers to location. With generator, we plug them in, and we keep our product probably a little more frozen than you would find in our shop. In our shop, you know the the sorbets themselves are more of a semi frozen. Mm. Uh, when we travel about and do events, they they are a little more frozen, but they really they've thought to what is a a, a good um, eating. Uh, I want to call a consistency within a matter of minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's six seven o'clock out on the pier. Yeah, uh, it can get kind of warm. So I would imagine that right. as soon as you take them out of the freezer, they're going to come to temperature exactly as you want them, real quick. Yeah. So what we do is we prepare the bowl in the store itself, and depending upon the bowl choice. Uh, they are the sorbets themselves are layered in the bowl and that's how we keep them in the freezer when we do the event itself and when we are serving at the event that's when we put the toppings on so the toppings are you know strawberries uh, bananas um granola shredded coconut and coconut as a matter of fact goji berries so we we have to be selective of the particular bowls that we bring to the events. We can't bring our entire menu. Uh, It's just too difficult. So we select uh, four right now that we bring. And uh, they're good sellers. What are the yeah? What are the four? Let's talk through the products because it's almost lunchtime. I'm getting kind of hungry, mm-hmm. so this is uh, sort of invigorating my appetite a little bit. What's your personal favorite? Let's start with that. Well. My personal favorite is called the Sunrise Bowl. And to be honest, I don't know if I can remember all four that we have because we have been mixing them up. Um, but my personal favorite that we serve both in store and at, a, at the events is the Sunrise Bowl. Now, the Sunrise Bowl itself has um, one of the sorbets is called Blue Magic. The other one is Pattaya. And then it's topped with granola, banana, strawberry, and honey. Mm. Now, for me, the reason why I find that one uh, most appealing is I really like the banana strawberry honey combination. Yeah. It's a great taste. Yeah, good it's trifecta right there. Yeah. A little granola for some crunch in there too. That's right. All right, That's right. Here's the real pop quiz. What's your wife's favorite bowl? So this is very interesting. My wife's favorite bowl is not a bowl that we have on the menu Ooh, itself. Secret menu. Here you go. We're getting a secret menu item. So here's here's the way so the menu in the store works in two different ways. You can select a choice of what we have as signature bowls. There's 11 signature bowls on our menu. Now, the signature bowls themselves basically are, let's call it um, prepared. I don't want to say it's prepared, but it's it's a, a listed menu of items, mm-hmm. right, that are in each individual bowl. And they have names, you know, so you can select from that bowl. Well, the other way that you can um, choose is you can do what we call a build-your-own bowl. So that means that you can select any of the bases that we have available and any of the toppings that we have available. So my wife, her name is Kathy, 
she has done what she calls the Kathy Bowl. Love it. Kathy Bowl. Yeah. She does the Kathy Bowl. And Do you know the recipe not, by heart? I don't. Yeah. I don't. No. She, we get Kathy on here for a follow-up to get I don't. I know, it, I know it has banana, strawberry, and blueberry, and uh-huh. honey. Um, I'm really not sure of what the bases are, but I know it's acai. In fact, it might even be only acai. Okay. But um, believe it or not, there's one or two other customers who are familiar with the uh, the Kathy Bowl that have ordered the Kathy Bowl. There you go. Yeah. Well, now everybody's going to know about That's it. That's right. Everybody in Wilmington's coming in asking for the Kathy Bowl this That's weekend. Right. That's right. I love it. Uh, Todd, anything else? Like I, you're you're located at Pier 33. What's your website? Um, well, you can find us at nauticalbowls.com. Okay. Yep. And that'll probably bring you to the corporate website. Yep. And then from there, you can go to uh, our specific location. Find Wilmington location. Yeah. yeah. But I would also say, uh, you know, go to, if you're going to do a Google search, go to Nautical Bowls Wilmington. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, on Facebook and Instagram, you can do the same. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, app, can people order online and come and pick up, like convenience and stuff like that? You guys yes, offer you that? Yes, cool. you can. So you can order on the app. You can do, if you order on the app, you can do in-store pickup if you like. Um, we also use DoorDash and Uber for delivery. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Todd, thanks for coming. Appreciate yep. you sitting in on the pink couch. All right. It's pronounced acai, which, do, what's the, do you know where the, the place of origin is of the acai berry? So the, the acai berry is native to Brazil. Okay, yeah. Brazil. And one of the other things that I wanted to mention about our particular product is it's all natural. Mm. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, no refined sugars added to our product. So when you taste uh, any of our sorbets, whether it be uh, the acai, mango, coconut, um, Pitaya, which is dragon fruit. Okay. And um, the other one that I mentioned earlier, which is called Blue Magic. Mm-hmm. You're tasting the fruit itself in its natural form, the way right. the way nature intended. Proper so, food, nothing processed. Nothing processed. It's all natural. Good. So that's one of the things that sets us, us apart a little bit from some of the others. Yeah. Is that we are a all natural branded product. My wife and I were having that conversation the other day because she's a, she's a nurse practitioner. She has a wellness center up in Wrightsboro and, um, you know, reps are coming in and out all the time, right. bringing her different food. And she's like, I don't like, I wish we had more places that were organic, not processed, you yes. know, like not sprayed with pesticides yes. and all that other stuff. Yes. So good to know. Nautical bowls, you can get some clean, healthy food. Right. Tastes great, too, I'm sure. Tastes fantastic. There ain't nothing wrong with a mango. That's right. Well, ain't nothing wrong with a mango. That's Todd, right. thank you for coming. People, go support him. Go support his business. Kathy's there, too. You guys both work in their husband-wife combo working together most days? Yeah, I'm there pretty much every day. I treat yeah. it like it's my job. Yeah. So I go it there. It is. All, it's my it's job. your business. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I go there every day. I try to take a day off here or there, but I'm there most every day. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, welcome to Wilmington. Welcome to the community. Love having you in downtown. We're four or five blocks away from you over here at the Signal Fire Studios. We're on Princess Street. So appreciate you for coming in. All right. Best of luck to you. Have a great summer. Ladies and gentlemen, go check out Todd and Kathy over at Nautical Bowls. And until next time, that's going to do it for this episode of the Connect Cape Fear podcast. Go out and enjoy all this beautiful beautiful, beautiful stuff that we have here, the geography, the businesses, the people. We have an incredibly special and unique place. So if you don't know about Wilmington, you haven't heard about Wilmington yet or the Cape Fear region, go out and enjoy it. And for those of you that are blessed to call this home, we know that you do as well. So thanks for coming. We'll talk to you next time.